Hi, I'm Gerald and today we're going to demonstrate how to install Windows Server 2012 as a virtual machine using VirtualBox software. Windows Server is going to be the first server that we install for this project. We can see Windows Server here on our network map and it will be assigned a static IP address of 192.168.200.2. We can also see that Windows Server 2012 will be connected to other workstation on this LAN and also connected to the WAN via PFSense. And on our network map we can see Windows 7, Ubuntu Desktop, and Mint Desktop as our workstations and our second server will be Ubuntu server and we can see the PFSense firewall which is connected to our WAN. The first step of the installation process is to set up a new virtual machine and to do that we can go down to our VirtualBox Manager and click on New Virtual Machine. It asks us what we want to name it and because we're installing Windows Server 2012 we just call it Windows Server 2012. And our type will be Microsoft Windows and our version will be Windows 2012 64 bit. And we'll just click next. Now it's asking how much RAM we want for our virtual machine and we'll just leave it at the recommended setting of 2 gigabytes. The hard disk, um, we want to create a virtual hard disk now and it's telling us that the recommended size is 25 gigabytes and we'll just click create. Our hard disk file type, we'll just leave it at virtual box disk image. Click next. Our storage type, we will leave it at dynamically allocated and click next. File and location, we'll just leave it at Windows Server 2012 and also um, 25 gigabytes. Right now we can leave it at that. I'm sure we can adjust it later if needed. And we'll just click create. And all of our settings there are done. So in order to um, set up the network, we'll click on settings here and go down to network. And for adapter one, make sure it's enabled and we'll attach it to our internal network and the name of our internal network is pfsense so we'll just select that and then click on storage so that we can attach our ISO file and just click here click on our optical drive and choose virtual optical disk file and we have our ISO files that we previously downloaded. We'll find our Windows Server 2012 ISO right here. You click open and we can click OK here. And our next step is just to start the virtual machine. Okay, first thing we need to do to install Windows Server is select our language, time, and keyboard preferences. So we'll just leave it in English, United States, and for our input method, we'll just keep it at US. And now we'll click Next. And we do want to install Windows Server, so we'll click Install Now. And it tells us that our setup is starting. Now it's asking us to enter the product key to activate Windows. So we'll just enter that right now. And we'll go down here and click next. 
Now it's asking us to select the operating system that we want to install and it gives us the choice of installing a server core installation or the server with the GUI and for this example we'll just install the server with the GUI and click next. Now it's asking us to agree to the license terms so we'll read through this and click I accept the license terms and click next. Now it's asking which type of installation do we want and it's giving us the choice to either upgrade or do a custom install and we'll click custom install and choose our where we want to install and click next and now it's copying and installing our files Okay, now it looks like Windows setup is restarting our Windows server. And we'll just click restart now. And we can go ahead and go up here to devices, optical drive, and remove the Windows server 2012 ISO. And it looks like Windows Server is booting up and getting everything ready. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is set the password for the built in administrator account. So we'll just go here and type in our password and re-enter our password and click enter or finish down here and it will finalize our settings Now that Windows Server is loaded, it's asking us to press Control Alt Delete to sign in. So to do that on a virtual machine, we can just go to Input Keyboard and click Insert Control Alt Delete. Now we can enter our password and it will log us in. And it's asking, do we want to find PCs, devices, and content on this network and automatically connect to devices like printers and TV? We can click yes because it's recommended setting. Okay, it looks like everything's starting to load up here. First thing we need to do is to set our IP address. And since we want to assign a static IP on this machine, we'll go down here and click Open Network and Sharing Center. We'll select our Ethernet connection and we'll select Properties. And we'll go down here to um, Internet Protocol version 4, select it and click Properties. And it will bring up our Internet Protocol version 4 properties box. Right now, it's assigned to get an IP address via DHCP, and we want to go ahead and change that so we can assign a static address. And we'll just click right here, and there are 192.168.200, and our subnet mask is going to be a C class subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Our default gateway will be our PFSense router IP address of um, 
1.2.200.1 and down here for our DNS server addresses we can assign that to our PFSense router address of 192.168.200.1 and click OK and we can click close here and we can click on details to verify that we have set our IP address correctly so it looks like our IP address is 192.168.200.2 which is correct our subnet mask is correct and our default gateway and DNS server look good also so we close this, close this box, and now we can test our connectivity. Okay, now we can open up our PowerShell window, and first thing we can do is ping our default gateway. So 192.168.200.1, and it looks like we've got connectivity to our default gateway. Now we can ping our WAN and that IP address is 192.168.0.1. That's our default gateway for our WAN. And it looks good. And now we can check our internet connectivity and ping 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And everything looks good there. This will complete the installation and setup of Windows Server 2012 R2 as a virtual machine on VirtualBox.